Thank you. Okay, before we move into our regular order of business and public comment, I'm going to turn it over to our superintendent, Ms. Gecko, who has a brief statement to read. Thank you, Mr. Minto. As I have advised the board, I have received communications and been made aware of social media posts relating to an assignment in a middle school English language arts class. This assignment has been used for many years. As part of the classroom discussion, the teacher asked students questions in a Google document which some parents and community members felt were invasive. That was not the teacher's intention, rather similar to an in-person class discussion, the intention was to kickstart a conversation about the material as well as to engage in interdisciplinary teaching teaching regarding civics. These types of cross-curricular discussions are encouraged and essential to the teaching process, and I'm sure you can appreciate are unfortunately much more difficult to conduct in the remote world necessitated by the worldwide pandemic. When complaints about the potentially invasive question were received, it was immediately removed. Nonetheless, we are committed to hearing community voices and pursuant to our board policies will not avoid addressing community complaints or controversial subjects. Under policies 1312 and 6161.2, I would ask that any parent of a student in that class who has an issue with the assignment to reach out to the teacher and, if necessary, to the building principal. I will ask any community member who does not have a child in that class to put their concerns in writing to me. I will then review our policies and implement a procedure to review the concerns and report back to the Board of Education. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Kidd. We will now move to public comment. This is the first of two opportunities for the public wishing to be heard. Uh, they can either come forward and again in a uh, hopes of more open and transparent government. We've also provided a phone number for uh, those of you viewing at home to call in. Uh, I believe it is on the bottom of the screen and I will just reiterate that for everyone. It's uh, area code 609-500-5000. Five five two two. This is actually a mobile number that can receive a text as well. So, Mr. Drallo. Good evening, uh, President Mento, members of the Board of Education. Joe Girallo, for the record, 321 East Orchard Street. I uh, just want to know, let you know that council reorganized last night. I will be back as the education uh, representative from town council. I'll be. Uh, be here as often as I possibly can. Glad to see that you're meeting in person. Uh, served here 15 years. Uh, Will, those comments ring very true. Said to my daughter how many nights we spent till one, two in the morning here. Uh, it's not an easy job. And uh, trust me, there's no thanks. Congratulations to Kelly and to Ray and to Sam. Good luck. It's going to be a tough year, but I think we can all get through this. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Please state your name. Good evening. <clears throat> I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday break. I'd like to congratulate the new board members. Wish you well. And it's certainly uh, pleasing to hear, and perhaps a bit ironic tonight, based on the topic I'd like to quickly discuss, uh, to hear you take the oath, the oath of office that you're going to support the Constitution of the United States. Uh, if it may please the board members, my name is Tommy Avery, and my daughter is a seventh grader here at Hamilton Middle School. First and foremost, I would like to thank you for hearing me tonight. I would like to take a moment to make the board aware of an issue that you were just discussing that occurred at the middle school. Late yesterday, I was made aware of a concerning assignment that my daughter was given in her English class. The assignment was a two-part assignment, with the first part being a questionnaire that the students had to complete via Google Forms, and the second part being a short story to read titled The Gun by Carol Ellis. The overall topic of discussion is of gun control. The questionnaire began with a reference to the Second Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. It informed the students of the Second Amendment, references the topic of gun control, and states that some refer to it as too tough, while others say to make it tougher. It concludes with a statement from the American Medical Association, which, quote, calls firearms a public health emergency with a simple cure, ban all handguns. The students were, were then presented with a list of various questions pertaining to the topic of gun control. They were asked to agree or disagree with such topics as a person's right to use a gun to defend oneself in case of an emergency, 
Should there be a limit on the caliber or type of guns civilians can purchase, among others? However, the most disturbing question asked was, quote, does anyone in your household own a gun, end quote. The second part of the assignment was to read a short story called The Gun by Carol Ellis. In the story, a child finds a gun left lying on the ground in a vacant lot. The child takes the gun to school, later leaves school, and goes to shoot tin cans near railroad tracks. He is questioned about this by police officers and learns that he accidentally killed a woman on the train. Now, I wanted to give you that background so that we knew where we were going from. I did speak to Principal Nolan about this assignment this morning, today. He informed me that he discussed the issue with the teacher who gave the assignment and that the question pertaining to owning a gun in your household was removed from later classes in that day. However, the egregious invasion of privacy in asking children to discuss such private matters is not the end of the story. The entire manner in which the discussion of gun control is framed is frankly outrageous. The claim is made to try to, quote, address both sides, end quote, of the argument. However, we must consider the entire context or big picture of the assignment in the overall analysis of that statement to determine whether or not both sides were adequately addressed. Let's briefly look at that. The introductory paragraph of the questionnaire makes a faint attempt at portraying both sides of the gun control argument by saying some say it's too tough, while others say make it tougher. However, it concludes with a statement from a credible organization, the American Medical Association, in which it says the answer is to ban all handguns. There is no statement from another credible agency or the opposing side. Therefore, one can imagine that in the mind of a young middle school child who has been conditioned throughout their school career to always look for the correct answer is for any given question by making that statement from the AMA last and coming from an authoritative figure, if nothing else, it gives the impression that the correct answer is to ban all handguns. That is a manipulative way in which to push an agenda and is not a way to present both sides of an argument to let children make up their own minds. Number two, although the invasion of privacy issue with respect to the children being asked if anyone in their households owned a gun was removed for some of the students, when I was discussing this with Principal Nolan, he said that they have been discussing this topic and asking that question for the past 19 years. He further stated that in the past, it would allow students whose families were involved in hunting to discuss their hobby with other students. Even the fact that this has been asked in a class as a discussion in the past is highly inappropriate. It is absolutely no one's business what happens in our individual households. We are guaranteed the right to be secure in our persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. And that question equates to an unreasonable verbal search and is and has been inappropriate. Number three, the short story, The Gun by Carol Ellis. Excuse me, Mr. Yes, and I, I don't want to cut you off. I see you're getting into multiple points. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, we do have a time limit. For yes, sir. The public, for the public comment, um, which you well exceeded. And, and that's OK. I, I'll give you your time. But I realize it seems like as if you have a lot of points to make. And sometimes that's a better conversation directly with the superintendent, one yes, on one, sir. especially with the muffled mask and everything. But um, you know, I will give you a, a, a minute though to to uh, I will, I'll come wrap to up. a conclusion. Yeah, I will I absolutely wrap it up. Okay. My my point here is that um, one can easily determine that the objective of the instructor is to push an anti Second Amendment and enhanced gun control policy mindset into our children, without any level of education as to any positive aspects as to the reason why our forefathers may have chosen to limit our government with the Second Amendment. Um, I would recommend, and I came here tonight not to, not, not to berate a teacher. I don't envy the fact that of the plight that they have with trying to play the middle ground in arguments. Um, it's certainly challenging. 
and it's good to have a healthy discussion. I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, but it's not appropriate to, to, to try to push an agenda. I would urgently recommend that the Board of Education investigate this incident further, that the ultimate guidance from the board to the school be to encourage parents to discuss the topic with our children in the manner in which we see fit, and to appropriately and equally discuss all sides of the discussion, as this was not the case here. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, President Matthew, if I could jump in, uh, Mickey, for one second. Uh, Mr. Avery, I don't know if he could hear me or not, but I couldn't agree more and I couldn't make his statements any better. I did bring this to the board's attention last year. This very same thing happened last year. It was a different book, I believe. But the question was asked in that one ownership at home. I think this board has to delve, delve into this a little bit. And, you know, I don't think the teacher met any malice in any way at all when she brought this up. I think the teacher was mainly trying to get to her point. And, and I don't think her point was about limiting the Second Amendment at all. I think she was just trying to get to the finer points of the book. And, and so I don't think in the teacher, a lot of people on Facebook today went one way for the teacher, but then they came around the other way and said, exactly what I just said. So, but as a board, we need to get into this a little bit in the future and uh, avoid these type of questions from being presented. I, I agree with you. And I would only suggest that in hearing that this has been discussed before uh, and there has not been a change, so we're still discussing it. I would encourage the board to actually take action so that we're not in this position next year. Um, thank you. Step up and state your name and address. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Tracy Angelosi, 425 West Orchard Street. So I came here tonight. I wanted to see everyone sworn in, and I think it's really important that we focus on the positive things that are happening in our district. I can attest as a parent of a student at the West, seventh grader middle school and a teacher of 16 years at the high school. I see firsthand all three levels in all schools using virtual instruction, discussion, and office hours. My son, he's a fourth grader. He has an IEP. He gets OT. He gets speech services. I see it happening all during the week and it's wonderful. We really need to focus on what we're doing positively as a district. I think it's amazing what the district can accomplish when we all work together, and we're doing that right now. We have the best interest of our children and our students firsthand. Every role has its set of challenges, and we all need to respect that. I hope that we can move forward in the new year and continue to work together as a community, staff, admin, and a Hamilton Education Association. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, seeing no one, we're going to close this portion of public comment. And we'll now move to the action items of this evening. Uh, some of these are rather important and uh, kind of fun to uh, do every year. So let me Resolved that the Hamilton Board of Education appoint Mr. William Donio, Esquire of Cooper Levison, attorneys for the 2021 calendar year. We'll take the standalone. Is there a motion, please? Motion. Yeah. Mr. Antonassi, seconded by Mr. Pangeo. Uh, before we do, uh, we vote this evening. Again, I just want to thank Mr. Donio for uh, his commitment to the Hamilton School District. As you know, uh, he is a second generation Donio here in the uh, solicitor seat. And uh, like I say every year, I'm a student this is Guy, uh, we love uh, having Will here, keeping us all out of trouble. <laughs> With that, I will uh, entertain the Mr. Antonesi? Yes. Mrs. Bernardo? Yes. Mrs. Burns? Yes. Mrs. Fallon? Yes. Mr. Lyons? Yeah. Mr. Pangia? And on the question, do the fees stay the same? Uh, yes. <laughs> Mrs. Polito? Yes. Mr. Pelea? Yes. Mr. Shipion? Yes. Mr. Mento? Yes. Motion carries. We'll now take remaining items 
I'm sorry, Mr. Dunning. I just wanted to say thank you. It's a, it's a privilege to serve with the board, and I, 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 I thank you. We'll now take the uh, next item. Discussion regarding number five, regarding our calendar. Um, I'm sorry, oh, Kelly. I sorry, Kelly Fallon speaking. Yes, number five, regarding our calendar, um, our January meeting is listed as January 21st. Um, back in November, the negotiations committee scheduled a meeting with the Hamilton Education Association at 6.30 on that night. So I was hoping we could reschedule or not reschedule, actually schedule our Board of Education meeting on a different night, either the 14th, which is, would be the normal um, week that we would do it. Um, um, yeah, I, I didn't realize that about the meeting. Uh, that was a while ago. But uh, what we'll do, we'll have to reschedule the uh, negotiations, because typically in our January meeting, by the time we get committee reports out, we really don't have enough time to, to meet next Thursday and we would often meet on the third Thursday of January. And then we'd go. Could we move the meeting to the 28th? It's just that it involves a lot of people. Some representatives are here um, from the union. It involves teachers, people, union representatives from all um, of our staff. It was scheduled in November. All of the committee members were copied on it. Um, just asking you to honor that. Why don't we do this? Let's approve as written, and then we can address it, and we can always modify it. I don't know if the 28th is gonna work. I know some people I've spoken to, we kind of base things and being out of town around school board meetings. Um, you know, why don't, why don't we approve the meeting as is, and we could either amend this or amend the other uh, meeting go, going forward, or maybe we could change the time. If that would work, we can even go earlier on the 21st with negotiations prior to close. Perhaps if you bumped it up an hour. For the most part, I guess the teachers, and I believe we have some representatives here, you guys are probably just staying at the school anyhow um, until 6.30, so perhaps if we just moved it up an hour earlier, that, that would work as well? Um, I can't really speak for the negotiations committee, but I can tell you that there are 17 people on that committee, which is quite a bit. Um, in which they're trying to schedule with their families, their lessons and everything. It's quite a bit of people to reschedule and uh, they've been working on that date for quite some time, right Ms. Fallon? Yes, we scheduled it back in November and, um, and even if we moved it an hour, our closed session begins at six o'clock so we would only have a half hour and it's, it's just not sufficient time to accomplish anything. <laughs> we can vote on it. I don't, I don't know. Um, I mean, is there, are, what do you, are you making a motion to, to change it or are you just, just, just trying to talk it out? Um, I mean, is everyone available? I mean, can we just move more meeting? Can we move this meeting back? Well, that's right. That, that, that's I, yeah, we yeah. suggested either moving it to the 14th, which sounds like it's too soon, or the 28th. No, I mean, I mean the, uh, the same meeting. day, just move the time. Well, this meeting back. Oh, like later? I don't, Start this I don't know. I mean, we have a closed session. I think we should do the 28th. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm up with anything. I mean, the 28th doesn't work. Yeah, it's good for you guys. It's just the 28th doesn't work. Does it, it doesn't work, you said? I can't, I can't do the 28th. Well, we have a vice president who could perhaps do it, but I mean, let's and, vote and, on and it. And again, I haven't decided what the committees are going to be exactly yet. So why don't we address that in, in the near future, and we will vote as, uh, as it is presenting. Any other discussion? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. President, if I could uh, just very briefly direct everyone's attention to uh, number three, which is resolved that the Hamilton Board of Education adopt the New Jersey School Board Member Code of Ethics for the ensuing term. The New Jersey uh, Administrative Code and CUSAC, uh, that is the review of you as a, a high operating district, uh, requires that you have a discussion regarding the school board member code of ethics. One, I suggest you read it. Uh, it was, uh, it is written in the positive. It is a number of things that board members should uh, aspire to do in their actions. Uh, I would suggest to you that 
Uh, first and foremost, however, the, the rule that is not written in there but is encompassed in all the code of ethics is that the board does not run the schools it ensures that they're well run. And that in all matters, uh, the most essential component is to address any concerns uh, to the chief school administrator and allow an administrative response before taking any action to make no private promises and to take no private action which might otherwise uh, unduly compromise the Board of Education. Uh, you should also make yourself familiar with the School Ethics Act. That's 18A 12-24, A, B, C, D, E, F, and uh, B, G, or I, I guess if I can do my alphabets. Um, and that is a list of prohibited acts that, that uh, prohibits conflicts of interest. Uh, but the Code of Ethics is really the one where board members in particular is addressed solely to board members about how you should conduct your actions as a board member. And finally, I would leave you with this uh, suggestion. If you have a question, ask a question. Uh, there's no bad questions in that required. Uh, first, you can direct it to the chief school administrator. Uh, if you ask the board president, he can ask me as a solicitor to get involved. And finally, there is the opportunity at all times to get an advisory opinion from the School Ethics Commission. They will act on it at their very next meeting if you put it in writing to them with regards to any action that you might take, and they will let you know in writing whether or not you will run afoul of the Code of Ethics. So, I would ask that the minutes reflect that you had your discussion, that which satisfies that QSAC requirement with regards to governance under uh, this provision with regards to the Code of Ethics. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Adsanasi? Yes. Ms. Bernardo? Uh, yes, but no on number five. I think Mrs. Salmon made a very good point, and I don't see why it can't be addressed. <clears throat> Mrs. Burns? Yes. Mrs. Fallon? Yes, no on number five for the reasons I stated on the record. Mr. Lyons? Uh, yes, but no on number five. Mr. Piangia? Yes. Mrs. Polito? Yes on everything except no on number five. Mr. Palea? Yeah, yes. Mr. Scipio? Yes. Mr. Bento? Yes. Motions pass. Committee assignments. Um, as always, please, uh, board members, reach out to me with uh, any requests for committee assignments. I'll, I'll do my best to. Uh, Try to accommodate um, your request. And we will now move to the second portion of the public comment. This is the second opportunity for anyone in the public wishing to be heard to come before the board. Again, we have the number on the bottom of the screen. I'll, I'll repeat it. That's 1 609 500 5522. We'll give it a minute. And then we'll entertain that motion for adjournment. Meeting adjourned, we'll take a two minute recess and go into the